Nvidia, Nvidia, or AMD. It's obvious that Nvidia GPUs are just plain better. Pretty much eliminated Nvidia for me. Radian cards really are as bad. They're the obvious choice. It's the age-old question, and it's the one that's now more relevant than ever. All you really need is a PC. There, done. You're very welcome. Onwards you go, game defy. All right, sorry. All jokes aside, if you are seriously looking to start game development and are wondering if your current PC will cut it, then I do have a few tips for you. Because while the PC hardware choices you make will impact a big part of your development pipeline speed. Now, I was the designated person to build a new, upgrade, maintain, clean and fix all the PCs of my previous company. So. I'll first talk about some of the experiences I've had with the many different brands and kinds of PC hardware that I used over the last 10 years. First of all, I want to add a small disclaimer. I know there's this huge, never-ending PC enthusiast flame war going on between the different brands. It's obvious that NVIDIA GPUs are just playing better. Game over. Mostly because there's actually very little choice in brands, at least for consumers. On the CPU side, you have red versus blue, AMD versus Intel, and on the GPU side, there's team green and team red, and a little bit of blue, Nvidia, AMD, and uh, Intel. We probably all know and love or hate these brands. Now here's my super biased opinion based on my experience over the last 10 years building and maintaining the PCs for a small time in the game studio. CPUs. I really don't like AMD CPUs. There, I said it. Of course, they are fine consumer-based products. Apparently they're even winning the gaming performance race, which is epic for them. But from a game development point of view, they lose. Now, I, I hear you say... Uh, Dom, game dev is essentially building and playing a game. It even has the word game in it. So if AMD is winning the gaming performance race, how can you say you don't like them? Well, you must understand that the editor of a game engine like Unity is working at 200% the whole time. On one side, it's trying to render the game that you're making at real time or trying to. And on the other side, it's trying to do a thousand other things like compiling code, measuring performance, hooking into GPU, rendering to read it back on the CPU, etc, etc. And this means that for game development, you need a CPU that does more than just work well in games. You need a powerhouse with one thing above all, the fastest single thread performance you can get. Uh, single thread performance. What's this? During game development, most of the tools you'll use are in some ways optimized to use multiple cores and threads on your CPU. But especially with Unity, a lot of the really important stuff fully depends on the ultimate speed of one of your cores of your CPU. And if you look at websites like uh, cpubenchmark.com, you'll quickly see that in general most Intel CPUs have the highest single thread performance. And over the last 10 years, Intel has been fighting very, very hard to keep that throne. It now has gone to a point where they have been pushing the chip so hard that it's starting to show the cracks. But they found a fix. Normally, CPUs had a maximum temperature of about 100 degrees Celsius. Intel now has found a way to improve the build quality of the chips to allow for even hotter temperatures. Now, of course, this is totally insane, and I really hope they will find other ways to improve the performance. But if you are looking for the best out-of-the-box CPU performance and stability for your game dev adventure, I highly recommend going Intel. Now I realize in saying this that I am just throwing fuel on the flame war between Team Blue and Red, but apart from speed, I've also noticed that AMD CPUs have a tendency to be less stable and more prone to blue screens of and freezing windows. Sorry, AMD. All right, now that the arguments are getting heated, let's flee the CPU scene onto the GPU. Intel GPUs suck, have sucked, will suck forever. Don't let them fool you. They are almost always very low power and even lower performance chips included in a CPU. If you are a gamer, you know that you don't game on an Intel GPU. And for game dev, it's even worse. So just forget about them. And that leaves AMD and Nvidia. And 
I like both equally. Generally, AMD lags a little bit behind NVIDIA in performance and some new technologies, but they make up for it in sharing their technologies in the open source domain, which is really epic of them. And what most people don't realize is that looking at performance comparison videos between comparable AMD and NVIDIA GPUs is useless because all companies cheat if you run a game on two identical computers and monitors at exactly the same quality settings, one running an NVIDIA GPU and the other one an AMD, the visual fidelity will not be the same. Now, you can see this in comparison videos due to YouTube's horrible video compression, but it may be that NVIDIA is lowering the texture resolution to stream in textures faster, gaining some extra performance, or AMD doing something with real-time reflections to gain 10% extra performance. So does it really matter which brand you get? I don't see a really big difference, so go with your gut. Watch the useless comparison videos over and over again. Pick one blindfolded. Whatever you choose, it's going to be just fine. Memory time. I really don't care about any memory brands or whatever. The only thing you have to worry about is that some memory is specially developed to work best with AMD CPUs and the other ones for Intel. But what I really do care about is the amount of it. And for game development, you can never have enough. And I can't stress this enough. You can never have enough memory. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM and I run out of it easily, almost once a week. I'm seriously thinking about upgrading to 128. Now, there are a lot of other things that you have to think about when getting or building a new PC, like a power supply, motherboard, case, fans, etc. But these days it's all somewhere between just fine and great. And there are no real contenders for parts that will blow up your system anymore. So on to budget. PC stuff is expensive. And do we really need that i9 CPU and 4090 RTX graphics card? Probably not, no. For CPUs, it's generally pretty easy. We already know we need an Intel CPU and they come in four flavors. There's the i3, which is the most budget, followed by the i5, then the i7, and lastly the flagship, the i9. These four flavors are again subdivided with different performance versions. Now, if you take the fastest version of each of these four flavors and test their single thread performance against each other, you'll find out that they're actually pretty comparable. So I suggest to always pick the fastest version, the one with the fastest clock speed in gigahertz of each of those flavors to begin with, because in price they don't really differ that much. Currently the biggest difference between the four flavors is the amount of cores they have. The fastest i3 for instance only has four cores, while the flagship i9 has 24. In Unity, there are only a few times where more cores is better, so most of the time a CPU with four or eight courses, plenty. Personally, if I were on a budget, I'd go with the i5. As for GPUs, on a bit of a budget, I'd always go for the current generation NVIDIA 60 version. So in this case, the RTX 4060. Or if you'd like to go with AMD, it's equivalent the RX 7600 XT. And then pump all the money you have left into getting the most amount of memory you can get. I highly value amount over speed. There really is no slow memory anymore. There's only not enough of it. Also, word to the wise, always get two RAM sticks instead of four because it's much more stable. But if you're not on a budget and don't care about the amount of power draw from your part-time PC, part-time room heater, well, obviously get the fastest i9 Intel CPU, the NVIDIA 4090, or wait a bit longer for the next generation 5090, and get a gazillion gigabytes of RAM. On a small note on Intel CPUs, Intel has been in the news a lot lately because of breaking down and degrading chips. And this is definitely no fun. I've had the same issue with the CPU of my PC as well, but they fixed it with BIOS updates. And I can confirm that it didn't hamper the performance in any way. But even more importantly, and this is very nice, they increased the warranty from two years to five, which is something unheard of for PC hardware. Poof. 
enough mumbo jumbo about RX620s, R2D2s, AMD RTX crap. Go get your PC and go build epic games. Which reminds me, I should probably go do the same. Hopefully I haven't fueled anyone's anger in bashing their beloved hardware company. Please like, subscribe, all you want and hope to see you again next week. Silicon wars on the digital plane Benchmark balance is never the same AMD vs Nvidia, they clash Intel's right there with the microchip stash Bite for bite, it's a ruthless fight Clock speeds climbing through the night Threads like lightning, they scream and race Single core champions take their place Threat fire burning in the night Takes the crown, makes it all right AMD, Nvidia, or Intel's The naked dev yells The naked devils, specs and numbers.